Hey there, everyone! Welcome to a new Let's Play with me, your host, Tim! And today, we're gonna start playing through Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark together! There will be some prep here that you can skip by going to the comments section down below, where there will be a pinned comment for me containing a timestamp in it. That will let you jump ahead where we actually start a new game, in case you don't care about my preamble, which will be me talking about Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark briefly. We're gonna talk about what type of game it is and why we're playing it. We'll also be talking about any special playstyle stuff I'll be doing during this game. Alright, so Felso Arbor's Mark won the Tactics category in the survey I put together about three weeks ago now. It beat out a few other turn-based strategy games, and so this is the turn-based strategy game we will be playing. Well, at least, well, one of them at least, to start, I suppose, from my channel. You should know that this game is combat. It looked very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics while the leveling system reminded me very much of Ogre Battle 64. Now that said, I have not played Felsu Arbiter's Mark at all. I know nothing about the world we will find ourselves in. I don't know anything about the characters or the story. I, I don't know what character classes we will unlock, and I don't know if we can even name characters in the game, but I believe we will be able to do at least that. So, with all that said, if you are interested in being a hero in this campaign, having a character named that for you, uh, let me know in the comments section, and we'll go ahead and do that. Let me know what name you would like, if assuming you want a different name from what your YouTube or BitChute handle is. Let me know what class you would like to be, assuming you know what classes are even available. And if you do not, if you give me an idea for what type of role you want to fill, I'll keep my eye open for that class when it shows up, and then try to work towards it. Now, on this note, you should know that I know very little about the character classes in this game. Since it looked similar to Ogre Battle, I'm assuming that I have to spend some amount of time leveling as a certain class in order to get the statistics required to unlock a different class. And then we have to spend some time in that class as well. I think some classes are unlocked by possessing certain pieces of special hidden or secret equipment and or gaining or completing a quest of some sort. I know, for example, there is a werewolf in this, but I don't know how many people could become a werewolf, if even more than one could. So keep that in mind with your uh, askance for what type of class you want to be. I'll have to get lucky enough or skilled enough to be able to unlock these things as we go forward. You should also know that when it comes to games of this sort, that I like reading everything that is text. That every... Every sentence a character utters, I'll re go ahead and be reading it, and I will spend some time at the end of each video, maybe like 10 minutes or so, trying to read any lore that we might have unlocked in a, I'm assuming like a storybook uh, that we might pick up, and I'll be reading different item descriptions if they have anything that sounds like it's important or lore related, as well at the end of these different uh, videos that I've put together. Because I love figuring out more about the world I'm adventuring in, while I'm adventuring in that world, I think that adds a great deal of depth and makes me care about the characters, or maybe gives me a little hint as to how some of this stuff is utilized or put to good use. So, I think that covers everything, everyone. I'm going to go check on my voice really quick to make sure everything's coming out okay, and assuming it is, we'll be back to start a new game, so give me one second. Hey, everyone. Alright, sounds like my voice is coming out great. If you think my voice is too loud or the music is too loud, though, please let me know in the comments section down below. And I will make an alteration when we record part two. All right, so I think we're set, although there's there's two more things I should cover really quick. Um, in particular, that I'm fully expecting part one to be mostly tutorials and user interface. <laughs> and so in an, in an attempt to have some actual gameplay in part one, I will attempt to do all such interactions off screen where possible. So that's to say that when the game tries begins explaining how equipment works, when the game begins explaining how to assign abilities, I will simply cut the recording, I'll go ahead and look at all this off screen so I understand it, and then we'll be back. Because otherwise, I will end up doing about 35 to 40 minutes of work in this one one hour, like, 10 minute video <laughs> will just be me reading tutorial messages. And no one wants to watch that for part one. All right, so let's go ahead and hit new game and begin, shall we? 
Hello, what is this? Don't worry over much about these settings as you will be able to change them in-game from the troops menu, while not in combat. Difficulty settings, presets. This is the recommended mode if you are- Alright, I'll be right back everyone, I need to understand what this is telling me. Oh man, there's gonna be a lot of cuts in this video. <laughs> so, these are all the various difficulty options that you can set when playing Arbiter's Mark. These apparently can be changed during the game as well, but I don't like making alterations, and I like showing all my viewers what options I had selected when I went and hit New Game. And so, these will be the settings I'm going to use when we play. And we're going to go ahead and read about all of them, and I'll give my thoughts on them and show you what was what is a little bit different. This is going to take some time. I'm imagining this will take like 10 minutes. I know I just said I didn't want to do anything like this on screen, but this is kind of important because you need to under... Because this is more than just me doing some ability setting and customization when it comes to different equipment. This is actually important. All of us need to understand how it works. And so if you don't care or you understand what Arbor's Mark is and see these value set and you don't and now you're like okay tim i understand what these are there'll be another timestamp in that comment down below which will jump you to where i actually start the game but otherwise we're going to spend like 10 minutes here looking at all this stuff all right so let's go ahead and take a look so first an injury system so when a character falls in combat they will have a penalty to all their stats until they rest for a full battle resting means that you won't deploy them during an encounter the setting encourages the player to create a few substitute units. So if someone falls, they're all penalized. If you keep using them and they keep dying, they get more and more penalized. Now, I myself, I really like having a huge roster of characters, as you've seen me when played Darkest Dungeon. You never saw me play like Ogre Battle or Final Fantasy Tactics, but for those games, I had a huge amount of player-created characters, and I loved coming up with different uh, combinations of characters to send them on adventures together. It was amazing. And so, uh, while I don't necessarily need the encouragement, uh, I think this is fine, and we'll go ahead and use default. Other options were that a character takes a permanent de degradation to their stats, or if someone dies five times, they're permanently killed off. Since I haven't played Arbor's Mark yet, I do not know quite how the difficulty will scale as we proceed to the game. If it is as difficult as Final Fantasy Tactics, there were some battles in that game that I had to do multiple times. And so, we'll just leave it as default. If it turns out that this was way too easy, well, I can always play through the game again on a hard difficulty level a few years from now. For random numbers, so I'm using default, which is that the game will choose a random number. We could also instead have choose weighted, which makes it kind of like the player a little more, but I don't want that, and I think you guys wouldn't mind me missing uh, six 95% chances in a row to hit, similar to under rail, screw you under rail, and so we're going to go ahead and leave it as default. For enemy la level scaling, I'm setting this to no max. What this means is that I cannot out level the level of the creatures in a map. They will always be by level. And in this way, I cannot power level through an encounter that I would find too difficult. I'm just going to have to get better or find some combination of tactics, abilities, or items that will let me beat the encounters that I find myself in, rather than being 30 levels higher than them and the enemies not having a chance to touch me. For stat scaling, you can either make the enemies a little weaker or a little stronger. It goes up to... Um, Oh wow, plus 50% stats if you really want that. How about it? I didn't realize it could go that high. I'm leaving it as default. Um, the characters we fight will have the same amount of power as my characters, assuming that they were leveled exclusively as that class. For added enemies, this isn't an FPS, so I don't want there to be any extra enemies. I haven't played through the game at all once, and so I think default will be fine. We'll leave it alone. No extra enemies added. I suppose if you did add extra enemies, uh, this would give you an excuse or an option to gain more experience points during the during the battles, but I'll leave it as default instead. For enemies' gear, um, I remember like in Final Fantasy Tactics early on, like enemies wouldn't have a piece of equipment. Maybe they're not wearing like a helmet, or they're not wearing uh, like a, they don't have some sort of uh, secondary item in their uh, like ring slot. So by selecting more. I get the impression that enemies will always attempt to have like one more piece of gear than normal. Actually, it says that right down below. And so we can we can expect them to be better equipped, making the battles a little more difficult for us. 
I want enemies to always have passes or counters. If it makes sense for them to have it, then their classes are high enough level. So that's going to be set to default. If you don't know what, what on earth this means, don't worry about it. <laughs> we will eventually cover that in game. Enemies use drowning. So to I think what this says is that if the enemy can like push us into a river, which will kill us automatically, knock us off a cliff, or push us in the lava, I want the AI doing that every single time where it makes sense for them to do so, assuming there wasn't some amazingly powerful other thing they could have done. And so I will set always to on. I know that I will probably always attempt to push enemies into water to get rid of them. If, if, like, if I can do so, it would make sense that my enemy AI would do so as well. I want the AI to be tough. I think the enemy AI, if it could stand its opponent, if it's, uh, its units up to try to make a comeback, I think it should be allowed to do so. And I want them doing so as often as they can. And so I'm going to leave more on. This could make battles last a really long time, but I better begin learning how to do these battles better <laughs> if I want to end them and not have the enemy make a starting link, a start, startling comeback. Uh, on that note, if this proves to be too difficult, I can always change it in-game later on to a default instead. Um, I think enemies should have access to a small stockpile of items, and so default will make it so that, yep, whatever whatever the game developers, designers said they should have access to, let them have access to it. And I want them making sure that they use those items as often as they can. They have them after all, it makes sense for them to use them, and so I'm going to set that to more as well. Alright everyone, so... Basically, things are tougher than on veteran difficulty, but not as tough. Some Actually, some aspects of this are as tough as very hard, but some of these are as tough as it would be on the hard difficulty setting. But nothing was made easier. Alright, so with all that said, let's go ahead and start the game. centuries past. Another worldly beast known as the Ma appeared in Diora, leaving ruin in its wake. In this time of need, seven great heroes rose against the threat. The battle was fierce, but the heroes prevailed, and the beast was vanquished. In slaying the beast, the heroes gained the power of immortality. They formed the Council of Immortals to rule over the land and enforce order to prevent such a catastrophe from ever happening again. But powerful as the immortals may be, they are few. Thus, they created the Order of Arbiters to enforce their will and protect the land. As agents of the Immortals, Arbiters wield absolute authority. They are judge, jury, and executioner. But in time, the Order of Arbiters has grown complacent and corrupted. Could a threat as dire as the ancient beast itself be looming over Tiora? Good work, Anadine. You handled yourself well. Thanks, Captain. I don't feel I actually did all that much, though. A violent confrontation isn't always necessary or desirable. Negotiation is an equally important skill for an Arbiter. Of course, you're right, Captain. Are you sure Raynard knew the time we agreed to meet, Captain? Yes, he knows. But knowing Raynor, he's probably... Did you hear that? I didn't... Help! Anyone! Please! Oh, sorry everyone, I hope they didn't yell too loud. It sounds like it came from the alley just ahead. Let's go! What is the meaning of this, sir? Why on earth would you strike down an unarmed man? Explain yourself. Pesky witnesses. What a bother. You, hireling, earn your coin for once and dispatch these interlopers. Ok, 
Gelli. Defeat Alvinez. Okay, so we will be presented with tutorial messages, everyone, as we play. I'm fully expecting this. I will read them, but when it comes to what I'm going to assume will be, like, hiring new, new, new people, assigning skills, and purchasing new equipment, which I'm pretty sure we're going to get in this video, I will cut the video for those, and I'll do all that off-screen, and I'll come back to show you any changes that I made. But here, we'll go ahead and read the, the tutorial messages. So in this phase, you can decide which allies you want to join the battle. You can place characters on the glowing cyan tiles until the unit limit has been reached, shown in the top left corner of the screen. Sometimes specific characters will automatically join the battle and cannot be removed. At all times, the bottom right of the screen contains a list of buttons you can currently use. When using a mouse, you can also click on those icons to activate them. The left mouse button acts as the confirm key, and the right mouse as the cancel key. At most times in the game, you can press the help button to enter the help screen, where you can get information about relevant things shown on screen. Lastly, you can disable these tutorials in the options, although it is not recommended to do so for new players. Alright, so we have Virgil a wizard, and Lana a mender. We have a troops menu? Oh no, no, I don't want to be here. Uh, from this menu, you can manage your units, including changing your equipment, classes, abilities, etc. You can also access crafting, check your items, sort your units, and many more options. Look in the bottom right side of the screen to see all the options. Explore away. Okay, so I don't want to be here. Uh, this is this would take probably a long time for me to explain if this is going to cover everything. So I'm just going to exit this menu, and let's get back to the combat. I'll be spending probably half the game <laughs> looking at that screen. <laughs> all right. So we've got a mender and a wizard. Okay, so that, that's useful to know because I don't know what character classes are available. And so it looks like at the very least we have access to a priest and a mage as a type of character class. In case, you, again, you guys at home are interested in joining into this adventuring group. And we've got a mercenary and a noble slash scoundrel, mercenary mender... Okay, so a Merc and a Scoundrel are two other classes that we are able to select. I wonder if Noble is actually a class as well. Okay, well, we have two of three units placed. We can place one more character. And I generally like having a healer in my groups. So let's stick with Lana to start. And we'll place her here. And we'll face her north. Uh, in Final Fantasy Tactics, facing was important. Because enemies did more damage to you and had a greater chance to hit you because they would ignore your active defenses like using a shield if they attacked you from the side or from behind. So facing might be the same thing in this game. Let's go ahead and start. Yup. Begin! By lawful decree of the Arbiters, I order you to lay down your weapons and surrender. Now. You are an Arbiter. This is even more tiresome than I thought. Hireling, exterminate these pests for me, and you will receive a tidy bonus. At once, Lord Alphanes. As you wish. Anadine, it looks as though you are about to face your first real battle. Yes, I see. I am ready, Captain. I'm sure you are, but why don't we quickly review the basics just to be safe? In Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark, combat is turn-based. Every unit will get an individual turn, where they can move and or take an action in any order. You can see the global turn order at the top of the screen. A unit can move up to a maximum amount of tiles every turn, shown by their movement range, the foot icon. That movement is also restricted by terrain, and units can only reach tiles that are within their vertical movement range, shown by the jump icon. The height of a tile is shown in the top left corner of the screen. Oh nice! Hey, this is this is a very nice callback to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. We're at the we're at two height at the moment. A unit can take a single action every turn. The list of all their possible actions will be shown every turn for you to choose from. Actions include everything that isn't your movement, such as attacking, using an ability, opening a chest, using an item, etc. Now then Let's see what this scum. Okay, so we can move, we can attack, we have Warcraft, what does this do? First aid, restores hit points and removes 
okay, restores a tiny bit of hit points, and we moves Poison Bleed, Mute Cripple, and Sleep. Forceful Strike. Deal physical attack damage and push the target away by one tile, depending upon the terrain. And Holy Magic? Remove all debuffs from target. Alright, well, let's go ahead and start. So, I'm going to move her up. We could move... Okay, so we could move to the side here and attack him, but that would leave this area open, and I don't want my healer to be attacked, because she probably has less defenses than... Uh, Kiri, who has a shield, and so I think we'll just charge, so, and according to turn order, our healer is next. I'm going to hope that these guys cannot kill her in one round, so I'm going to move Kiri right up front, and we're going to swing at Alphanes, or Al Alfonza? Alfa Alfonza. Okay, now that we've moved, we will attack. Yep, let's attack Alfonza. Okay, and we have a 99% chance to hit him, and we'll do 17 points of damage if we hit. Attacks from the sides deal more damage than from the front, and attacks from the back deal even more damage. Take advantage of the mechanic. Taking advantage of this mechanic will be crucial to victory. At the end of your turn, you get to select your characters facing. Try not to show your back to your enemies, as they will also deal more damage from the sides and the back. So... I can't really stop them. So, on their turn, I'm going to guess that this guy will move up here and attack Kiri. And on his turn, he'll do the same. He'll move to the side to attack us. So, for, for example, if I have Kiri face in this direction, he will move behind Kiri to attack her. And then he'll just attack her from the side. I'd rather them attack her from the side than from the back. So I'm just going to have her face forward, even though she will be attacked from the side by both of these enemies. So I'm I'm going to hope this works just like Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm going to move our healer up to here. But I'm not going to have her do anything. Ah, yes, okay. I'm, I'm looking up here at the, at the turn order. See that sh she... She gets moved up in the turn order. So, ending your turn right away. If you end your turn without taking an action, your next turn will come slightly faster. Moving has no impact on this. So let's end her turn. And we'll keep her facing forward. I'm assuming that the enemies can't move uh, into the barrel and that they don't have any ability to jump over us. Ooh! Ooh! What do you have? Forceful strike. Alright, so let's... Let's charge... Anadine up. And we will face her... We'll end her turn. And face her this way. Oh. Let's go ahead and use some holy magic. And we'll heal... Kiri. For 30 hit points. Nice. And I'm just going to end her turn. Because she can't be reached. Enemies... So, if it works again like Final Fantasy Tactics, you can move through your own units, but you cannot move through enemies. They will block... Uh, uh, I forget what the, what the term's... <laughs> I forget what the term's called now. But in any case, oh, you, you can't move through enemies. Uh, the good news is his back is facing us, so we're just going to go ahead and just attack him. What did that other... What, what did this ability do? Does physical damage and pushes... Oh, pushes the target away one tile. Depending on the terrain, this could have interesting results. So... I don't want to do this because this might push him into her and might damage her as well. This is like the old dash ability that Squires had in Final Fantasy Tactics. So we'll just normal attack. Oh! Ending the turn... So I'm just going to have her face north again, because otherwise she will be attacked from behind, and I don't want that to occur. Oh, 
Let's go ahead and heal again. Does she have magic points, by the way? Where would I see that? She must. I see. So this six is the amount of magic points it caught. Oh, she does. She has 24 of 28 left. Oh, it looks like she recovers two magic points each turn. You could probably just we'll probably end him. Let, let's do that. We'll get one of the one of them defeating one enemy obviously means there's less on the field, which means we'll be taking less damage each turn. Oh, enough! I yield. A wise choice, if a bit late in the coming. Victory! We have earned 1,300 GP, probably gold pieces, 100 influence points, whatever the heck that means, and we've gotten two snake bite oils. I'm sure those will be useful if we get bitten by snakes. We've gained 165 ability points, 150 for completing the map, Kiri never falls bonus, 15 points there, Vicarious learning 22, total for all benched units, 70, I don't know what that means. Ladies, there you are. Huh? What's this? You didn't tell me you were going to a party. Rainer, at last. Weren't we supposed to meet an hour ago? We could have used your help with these thugs. No matter, this gentleman kept us company. And now we will show our gratitude by providing him with a nice comfy cell. Cannot be serious. Do you not know who I am? I am a lord, Lord Alphonse, to be precise. I am a nobleman of the realm. I command you to release me. Slaying an unarmed man, attempting to eliminate the witnesses to your foul crime, and now resisting lawful arrest. There are limits to the privileges of nobility, as you are about to learn. Huh. An arbiter and a simpleton, I see. Very well. Let us proceed with the farce if we must. Bring me to the arbiter's chapter house for my trial. Hmm. <laughs> Are you suddenly struck dumb as well as simple? The knight still does not agree with me. Make haste and escort me to the chapter house, wench. Rainer? I've decided to make a small detour to a luster. We will personally deliver this nobleman to the main chapter house. <laughs> Clever. I wonder how much sway the little lordling has in a luster. Very little, I suspect. Gather our people and make everything ready. We move at first light. On it. Now, to ensure you are comfortable for the trip. Oh, what did, what'd she do? Oh, she tied his hands behind his back. Outrageous! Simply outrageous! Simmer down, or I'll pull out a gag next. No one bothers washing the gags in between prisoners, mind you. Mm. Very well. What about the other one, Captain? Just a henchman. We'll drop him off at the local chapter house. No need to cart them both all the way to a luster. Let's head for a luster now. I'm sure our eminent guest is eager to get started on his trial. The journey may be treacherous. We should stop at the local guild here in Gelai and hire more hands for the road. An extra recruit would go a long way. Okay, <laughs> so everyone, I, I'm going to spend some time in the truce menu. Let, let's go take a look at the truce menu really quick. Okay, and I'm thinking that there's no reason for me to cover most of this. So, do I do, I do this? Let's see how long this will take. 
When one of your characters has earned enough AP to purchase an ability, the up arrow icon will be shown over their feet. If this icon is moving, it means you can learn a new ability since you last checked them. Okay, I'm going to cut the recording here, everyone, and I will do leveling off screen. I don't think you guys care very much about... Uh, you guys care about leveling and care about what abilities we take and so on, but I can show that after I'm done, and I need to read about all this stuff, and you guys don't, don't need to. I'll be back. Okay, everyone, I went ahead and looked at all the tutorial messages I think I could find on the, on this screen. There's a whole lot involved here. It reminds me very similarly of how leveling worked in Final Fantasy Tactics, with one big exception. It doesn't look like you can hold on to your ability points, they used to be called job points in Final Fantasy Tactics, to purchase any skill that that job, or class in this case, has available. You have to select abilities through a skill tree instead in order to gain access to later ones in that skill tree and we might be limited in having to choose between abilities at certain points so that's interesting i think i like this better it means that your classes are more focused and it rewards you for leveling them up further rather than you maybe just taking a class for one particular ability and then forgetting about it altogether you'll need to spend a lot of time in those classes in this game all right, well, that's it for this. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. So, he mentioned recruiting a troop. We couldn't do that from the troops menu. Let's see. So, let's go to Gale. Do I click on here? Oh, look at that. We get a little picture of the town. I like this. This reminds me of those of the images we saw when we were going into towns in Final Fantasy. Well, not we, but I had seen in Final Fantasy Tactics a long time ago. The nostalgia is strong with this game. I really like this. All right, so let's go to the guild. In need of new recruits. Okay, so reset level. What, is, what does this do? From this screen, you can select a character and reset their level to 1. This will reset their stats as a level 1 of their current class and leave their ability points intact. The main reason to do this is if you're trying to level the character in a very specific combination of classes for their stats growth and you feel you've messed it up. In general, it is not recommended to reset a character to level 1. Resetting Ka Kiri's level will influence the level of the other story characters you encounter during the game, which could lead to difficult encounters. Okay, let's not do this. I understand what- I understand- I understand exactly what they mean. <laughs> Having played Ogre Battle 64, and sometimes you- you've messed it up, and you cannot get the class you were looking for, but there was no recent level in that game. Alright, uh, I'm not telling you guys what is what's involved, because it would take too long. Let's move on. Change appearance? I cannot change the main characters, only Lana and Virgil. If I do this, what's uh, what's possible? Oh my goodness. You can change the visual appearance of units in this section. By using the left-right arrows on any category, you can quickly change its value or select the row uh, to view a list of possible options. You can import your own portrait into the game, information provided in the game's main folder about the process. Oh man. Okay. So... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the recording again, and I'll be back, but I'm going to make a new recording, and it's going to be titled, like, Part 1 Recruitment Options, or, or like, Recruitment Customization Options. And this video will be for all of you at home that want to make a character to join this group of adventurers during our gameplay. Um... I will cycle through all of the options here so you guys can see what it looks like and you guys can tell me like which combination of options you want. And if you're not happy with that uh, during the game, we can always change it to something different if you like as well. So I'll be right back. I'm going to make that video. Oh my goodness, everyone. That was 31 minutes of me covering all the different options which are available. I went ahead and created the character because I get the impression we will need at least one more recruit for what's coming up, assuming we have some sort of battle in the next area. Just I'll just show you really quick what this is like. 
but I made an entire different video for it, which we uploaded in a separate playlist. And so you can go ahead and purchase the type of character. It looks like every level adds 500 gold onto the character, and we're locked at the moment to only level 2, probably because our other characters are level 2. We can select the class that we want. We select what sex we want that person to be. And then you can go ahead and select what skin tones you want them to have, eye colors, hairstyles, if you want them to be wearing the hat or not, it's associated with their with their class, and so on. You can give them different eye, um, eye pieces as well. You can have them use their class outfit, you can say no, you can select it, other different class outfits if you wish. It's actually pretty involved, I like it. At the very end, you can also give yourself a portrait, depending upon what you want your guy to look like, and change the name if you wish. Alright, I think it's a lot better than having 31 minutes of me covering this in, uh, for part 1. So, let's go ahead and head back out to the camp menu. I went ahead and created... Oh, why aren't you renamed? You should, you should have been renamed! <laughs> so, one second. So, we'll do that really quick. So, we come here. I say, change appearance. We select Zert Dural, and I say change his name to Garrett. Okay, there we go. Let's just make sure. Yep, okay. So we had two mercs, and so... Oh, and we have a scoundrel and Rainer already. So I didn't realize that. So I made another scoundrel, Garrett, because I didn't think we had one. We have a mender, and we have a wizard. And so we'll just stick with these guys for this video. We're going to do one more mission, as it were, and we'll stop there. And then by, uh, I'll upload part one. I'll upload the customization video for any of you who really, really want to have your character look like a certain, a certain way. And then I can go and hire more characters and begin filling out the roster a little more. So before we do that, though, I should probably shop for some equipment for our new character. So let's go ahead shopping. I have not done this yet. Welcome to my store. Only the finest. Pursue at your leisure. Alright, let's uh, try and buy. Oh, I really like this. Okay, so we're going to try outfitting Garrett. So we have a dagger. And all he is selling are daggers. He also has a crossbow. Could he equip a crossbow? One second, if I go back and I try a different character, like Lana here. Okay, it must only show the weapons that are available for that that character class that's for sale at this shop. Yes, okay, all right, perfect. So then I don't see why Garrett, why we would, well, yeah, let's get you a, let's get you a, a ranged weapon instead. What goes in here? A hat? You're not wearing a hat at the moment, so we should buy another hat. You're not allowed to use a shield. Travis Garb is the only equipment that you're allowed to wear that this place sells, and there's no secondary pieces of equipment. Alright, so let's go ahead and purchase a crossbow and a fur cap for our Garrett. And we will... Space? Nope. And, uh, is it Enter? I want to confirm this. Yes. <laughs> Alright, hold on. So let's go to all the other characters as well. Just bucklers. I like her having an axe. That seems very fitting for Kiri. No better armor either. We know there's nothing else available. Hidden knife on Rainer. I guess we'll keep that. It would make. Uh, he should keep all his his equipment for the first mission. Anadine, your mall sounded fantastic when you smacked someone with it. Can we buy a buckler for you? Oh, no, we cannot. All right, so one, one second. Let's go back here again. Let's um, remove that and give you back your mall. So the mall is a two-handed weapon. Is that right? Okay, right, right down here. Two-handed weapon mall, range one, vertical four. Well, it's got some amount of reach to it. Everything else you have is better than what the store is selling. You can wear a circlet, Virgil. I guess we should buy one for you. That will be fine. Okay, that's okay. 
I'll probably be renaming Virgil and Lana later on as well. You're already wearing a circle. You have a wooden staff. All right, so I think that's it. So now, how do I purchase this stuff? Here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Let's confirm the purchases. Now, what's interesting is that you'll note we couldn't buy any... There's no potions for sale. There's no, uh, like, ink drops, consumables, to help you deal with status effects. I did a little bit of reading about this before I had purchased the game, and I watched a few reviews on the game. And from what I can tell, you never need to purchase these. You will automatically have a certain amount of consumables at every fight. And you can craft more of them so that, and better types of them, so that you have access to better types of potions or what have you, consumables, during the battles as you play the game. So we'll get to see this later on. Um, I don't think there's anything we need to sell, and we're not hiring on another person at the moment. So let's go ahead and get over to the crossroads. Enemy levels 1 through 99. Okay, so I guess you can go up to level 99. There used to be travelers sojourning in the area. But frequent marauder attacks have taken their toll on the busy road. Alright. Well, let's, uh... Oh, let's save the game first. Yeah, I have not saved the game yet. <laughs> that's that's good. Okay. Alright, one. So let's, uh... Let's do it. Kiri. Yes, I noticed. What's happening, Captain? Stand back, Anadine. Spotted! Ah, well. You arbiters are every bit as sharp as they say. But much friendlier. Well met, friend. Uh, if you have business with us, out with it. Otherwise, step aside. Of course, I will make it quick for you. Hand over that nobleman trespassing... Oh, wow. Traipsing along at your heels, and everyone else can be on their merry way, safe and sound. What a splendid idea! Quiet. Safety and soundness first. Exactly my philosophy. But first, tell me, just what is it you want with our bejeweled guest? Funny you should ask. From what I've been hearing lately, I bet you arbiters wouldn't mind a taste of this action yourselves, huh? Hmm... All right, here it is. This rich fop will pay us handsomely for his freedom. Hand him over, and 20% of the fee is yours to divide amongst yourselves. No one need ever know an arbiter was involved in our little transaction. I get what I want, you get paid, and your reputation remains as spotless as Illustre's peaks. Win, win, win. Is there a fourth win I'm missing? Well, what do you say? Do we have a deal? I don't know, Kiri. Only 20%? Captain? Enough. We haven't the time to exchange banter with these fools. As for you lot, attempted bribery, intimidation, interfering in arbiter business. Serious crimes. The kind that should see every one of you decorating the trees. But get out of our way. And I'll forget I ever saw your faces. This is my final and only counteroffer. Signal that you accept before I change my mind. Of all the doomy luck, we just had to run into another one clean arbiter within a hundred leagues. <whistles> Jump loudly, boys! It looks like we must earn our prize today. No survivors, no witnesses. The Crossroads. Defeat all foes. We have three other people we can place, and thankfully we do have three other people. So, I see... I see a lot of melee. 
axes. I don't see anyone else. I see dogs. I'm going to guess they don't have any ranged attacks. So let's go ahead and... Well, okay. So, it, I mean, that doesn't matter. I'm spawning the same people. It's only a question of how far... How close do I want to, like, put my wizard and what have you. So we'll put our mage here. We'll put our mender there. And we'll put Garrett here. Okay. I don't see any mages on their side, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the guess. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so there's uh hold on. There's there there could be reinforcements coming up, so we, we wanna get up into that uh, onto that trapdoor to stop them from opening it. Interesting. Good thing it's it's highlighted for me. I'm going to guess that they don't have any AoE. Let's go ahead and start. I'm, a, I'm going to also assume that my mage might have an AoE. Begin! Here we go! Okay, so, Rainer. You're up first, followed by Garrett. So, I'm... Uh... Hold on. I want free navigation. So I want to go over here and take a look at them. How fast can they move? Five. One, two. Can I click on you? Okay, good. So I can actually see where they can reach. Because I want to make sure I'm not within their reach. So we want to avoid this. Well, I guess we could move someone up and they could just take a hit. That uh, that might sucker Sylvia, for example, up to fight us. Oh, they're all level one as well. I, I could have just hired a level one uh, scoundrel. Vangles. Now, I could go and start looking at through all their abilities, probably. Let's see. Oh, no. Okay, so that's how this just shows me what all of them turn. I think that's how close they are to having their turn occur. Okay. Can I? Oh, nice. I, I can leave her. Oh, I can't leave her selected. Okay. If I hit space, show all movements. So that's the enemies. That's as far as they can reach. Okay. So let me do this again. I don't want you taking a hit. Where are you, Sylvia? That's you. Okay, we'll move up Rainer. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not even in this at the moment. Uh, how do I get back to my... Stop. Uh, hold on a second. All right, there we go. All right, sorry about this, everyone. My first, uh, my first real combat. Let's move you up here. And we'll... Wait, what's trickery do? Dirty hit... Steal GP. Neither of those will help me, I think. Let's end and face you this way. Garrett. I should be safe if I move you here. Before I do that, if I wanted to attack... Okay, I just want, I know, I could attack empty spaces in Final Fantasy Tactics, I guess that's not the case here. I'm a little worried I can't shoot over this, but I'll make the assumption I, uh, let's move here. It's probably safer to do that. And we'll end your turn, and you'll look up this way. Anadine, I want to give you a quick refresher on items. Items don't work as they usually do in most games. So you should, shouldn't probably skip this tutorial. In combat, any character can use items simply by selecting the items command in their action list. You will notice that items have a count next to them. That count is the maximum amount that can be used in any single battle and is shared across the whole team. At the start of every battle, item counts are automatically refilled to the maximum amount for free. So don't hurt back on using them as needed. So if I move here, you might get attacked by her and the dog next turn. I'm still going to do it. 
and I want her so even even though she might be surrounded next turn I still want her I, I might attack with uh, Kiri and move her back so let's move up Andine and we'll face her up here and what do I have here so these are AoEs okay good to know so, really, uh, hold on, can I, um, how do I do this, G? Where are the enemies? I might be able to hit both of them, let's see. Uh, probably not, probably not this turn. Okay, hold on, tab, tab. We move you here. If I wanted to use fire one, Okay, yep, we're not going to be able to do that this turn. Let's end. Kiri! Mark you that sizable trap door! I think they might have reinforcements waiting below. Well, Spide, if one of us stands directly upon it, that should keep it sealed against any new enemies. Agreed. But we must move quickly if we plan to secure it. They could strike at any moment. The dogs are going next, so before... Let's go back to free navigation. Okay, I could move Rainer here to have him attack. The dogs will go next. I don't know if I can kill her. He's gonna go with his maw. They might kill Rainer if I'm not careful. I don't think my... Um, my healer won't be able to reach Rainer if I move him up here, either. He'd have to survive at least two hits. I, th I think he might be able to do it. Oh, but the dogs will go uh, quicker next turn if they're not attacking this turn. Hmm. Okay, let's still do this. I need, to, I need to start hitting them before they actually get a chance to... I need to hit them with most of my forces, while they cannot do so with most of theirs. I think that these these two will be out of combat for one more round, so we should take advantage of that. So we'll try a dirty hit, and see if we can blind her. So that should hopefully reduce her accuracy. Since Sylvia's going not next, I think he's going next. I'm going to face him up this direction. Garrett, I'm going to just wait with you, I think. We can move him up one, I suppose. Let's do that. If I just charge up with you to attack her, you'll get surrounded and killed. I can't do that. We need to move her up here and just uh, wail on this one character. He'll be attacked by her and him and the dog. He might not survive. We'll face... Uh face up. You can heal that damage that she took.
Ooh, okay, yep, so dash does affect, uh, well, not dash, that uh, one attack ability does affect multiple people if they push them. Let's get in the way. An hour wizard. Can you use... He's going to have to move up a little bit. Darn it. Uh, can I take back my move? I can. Okay, so I would need to move up here. Uh, I'm going to do it. So we can use Elementalism Fire 1. Oh, he has a counterattack. He used thorns. All right, Garrett, can we kill one of these? No, we can't. But we can do some, a good deal more damage to them. Yeah, I knew he would be attacked by multiple by multiple enemies. So I need to attack and move away because I don't want. Well, you do, Tim. Although your mage might get hit if you're not careful. Ooh, forgot he had that. Let's move you back here. Will this kill this guy? It will not. I'll have to move you here instead. Or behind him. Let's move behind. We need, we need to work up towards this er area anyway. Okay, let's heal Rainer. He's, he's almost dead. And then we can move you. You probably take a single hit. I'm gonna move you up more. We could move on to that to stop them from getting reinforcements right now, and you know, I think we have to. Yeah, we have to. We'll just attack her. Mage... Let's move you back. Can I move you back three and still hit these guys with the elementalism so you're not... Well, I guess I, I guess I don't mind you taking a small hit. Let's see, if I move you here, can I then use fire one? I can't reach you. So we have... If I want to use another AoE, which I do want to do, we need to move him here. Kill that guy. You can kill him, though. Assuming you have range. Just enough. Special events that happen during combat will display an event icon in the turn order list at the top of the screen. 
When the event icon comes to the front of the turn order, the event will trigger. Uh oh. I don't think I can stop you from dying, Kiri. Let's see, can I item? No. Can I move you next to her? I don't think so. Sh this one's going next. I would imagine she'll move up and attack Kiri. That's 15. Can, I can you move behind her? Not enough damage. Oh no, attacking attacking our healer. Good for her. So let's I do kind of want to heal. We have a potion. We could use it to keep Kiri up. Sh sure. Sure. Let's move Kiri back. No, I, I, I don't want to get a forceful strike. Let's move her here, and we'll use a potion. Lana, you are hurt. You will definitely fall, unless I can kill the dog. And I... I can't reach her. She the one, she's, she'll be the one to attack next. You know, I think if, if I move here, can I throw a rock? I can move her off of this. Because the event won't... I'll have the dog to worry about, but I might be able to move Rainer on top of it. Oh, she should have thrown the rock at the girl, and uh, my cleric should have healed, is what should I should have done. Yeah, that, that was actually a poor move on my part. Rainer, what's your, what's your speed? Six. Okay, Rainer can make it on top of this. So let's have her... Uh, do I want to finish off the dog? Actually, I think we'll win before we even have to worry about someone coming out of that. Let's move her here. My mage can move. We can finish the dog. Actually, we can finish the dog with the mage. And then Garrett can move up and shoot the girl. Can I use... Can I use still GP? No. Can I use Warcraft, Forceful Strike? No, okay. I, I was curious if I could use one of them with, with his ranged uh, weapon. Oh, we won't kill her! Uh-oh. I thought for sure we could. Can I use Forceful Strike to kill her? No.
That's a bit awkward. It never occurred to me that I wouldn't have the damage to do this. Well, then, if she's going to leave, live anyway, I can't get behind her either. Let's uh, steal GP. So this, that seems like a very Garrett thing to do. Now, if she moves up and knocks me off of that, that would be really good on her. Nope, she's not going to. Okay, so this is probably over then. Actually, what, why am I doing that? I should be moving her towards the others. So I need to learn to use Forceful Strike a lot more often to hit the enemy when they're all clumped together. But this still worked This still worked out very well for us. Thankfully, I didn't lose a single person in our first combat, though it came very close. Yes! Not a complete noob. Able to, able to win the first battle without losing somebody. No reinforcements showed up either, thank goodness. All right, we gained 1,612 gold pieces, 100 influence points, one heavy crossbow, a shellac power, a snakebite oil. Everyone gained 198 experience points, 180 for map completion, and 18 because Kiri never falls bonus. And I understand what this means now, I think. This is how much experience everyone else would gain if we had any other people in our roster, which we do not have at the moment. This used to be an inn. Quite a prosperous one, if I remember all right. Burned down in a marauder attack last year. Mm. And no arbiters nearby to prevent it. Mm. You allude to that scoundrel's claim about arbiters taking bribes. Nothing but a desperate attempt to talk their way out of a fight. I don't believe a word of it. And yet... Here we are, dragging that foppish nobleman around because we can't quite trust the local chapter house. That's a long enough break. We need to keep moving if we're to reach a luster before nightfall. I'll make sure everyone is ready. Do you need a breather after that, Anadine? I guess it can't hurt. If we're not in a rush. Thanks, Captain. Occasionally, a node on the world map will be marked with an exclamation mark symbol, indicating that an optional character event is available. Select the node and choose Event from the menu to view it. Note that some events are time sensitive and may disappear as the story progresses. Alright, well, let's see what this does. Actually, I probably, probably should save the game. Okay, let's see what let's see what this is, and then we'll call the session. We have an event. Oh, we can patrol. Oh, we can gain some experience points. Okay. So when it comes to farming or grinding experience points in this game, grinding I felt was always a kind of a part of the Final Fantasy tactics. You looked forward to the combat because of how fun it was. So I will do that on screen, and I think I would like to gain level three on a few of these characters. So I, this also gives me a chance to see how many other people want to be part of this adventure, and I'll go ahead and hire probably two more people from the guild back over here at, uh, well, if, if I'm allowed to. I don't know if, if I'll be allowed to. Hopefully I will be, but if I can't go back, well, I'll hire new people maybe when we reach a luster. Otherwise, I'll farm with these people, and I at least have two others that I can rename or repurpose their classes. So I think it'll all work out in the end for you viewers. That was exhilarating, Captain. But I also feel a bit sick. It will pass. Her first time killing people. 
When I was a child, I dreamed of becoming an arbiter like my mother. I also dreamed of fighting alongside her, but never that I would be wearing her armor. The armor you inherited, but the position you earned. Watch this one for me, would you? Mm. Yes, Captain. Why would someone with your wealth and privilege stoop to murder? If that man had wronged you, I'm sure the court would be happy to hear your case. Ugh. The court's matter of dispensing justice is too costly or slow for my taste. I don't understand. That shocks me to my core. But what did he do to you? Let's just say he strayed from the rut which fate had gouged out for him. I still don't. Just like a pair of little girls I know, he interfered in the business of his betters, and quite soon afterwards paid the price for it. Perhaps one day you will explain to me how such a powerful lord came to be the prisoner of a pair of little girls. <laughs> Good for her. I love that smile she had too. Good for her. Good for her. Alright everyone, so we'll stop here. Thank you guys for watching the first Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark. Oh my god, playing it, it feels a lot like Final Fantasy Tactics. I, I'm definitely going to need to get better at using our characters very quickly and trying to make use of their abilities a little more often. All right, but that will do it. So thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. And the next one, by the way, there will be episodes where I'm just uh, doing like a, a grinding for or farming. Maybe not the entire episode. And but if I if an entire episode does end up with me just doing random encounters, farming uh, for experience or items or gold or just for fun, I will mark it with a uh, like a. The word farm in parentheses will be somewhere up in the title. Just so you guys know, there's no story stuff. So if you don't care about watching combat, but you do care about the story, you'll be able to tell that in the video. All right, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Take care, everyone.